Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tune Dallas. And if you're new, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure to check out my playlist with over 230 plus Philadelphia hood tours covering South Philadelphia, Southwest Philadelphia, West Philadelphia, Northeast Philadelphia, North Philadelphia, and Center City Philadelphia. Today we are going to do a narrated hood tour of the Junietta section of the city. This is located in the northeastern part of Philadelphia. Currently we are on Erie and Torresdale intersection. This is where you can catch the Erie Torresdale uh, train station. You get on the blue line, you take it to South Philly or you can just go North Philly by going up to Frankfurt Terminal. I used to hang in this neighborhood when I was younger, probably 16, 17 years old. I started making homies in this neighborhood. It's a lot cleaner than normal places in Philly. It's not the cleanest neighborhood, but it's pretty clean. Right now, it's a predominantly Hispanic and Caucasian neighborhood. However, to my knowledge, in the earlier years, for example, the 80s and the 90s, this was a primarily Caucasian neighborhood. But over the last two decades, a lot of minorities, uh, specifically talking about Hispanics, moved to this neighborhood to get away from North Philly. A lot of people I remember when I was younger, growing up, they looked at Junietta as being like, you know, the Northeast, which is a lot nicer. This isn't true Northeast, but this is like the tip of Northeast. All right, we just passed Erie Avenue and O Street. Erie Avenue and O. We have a Jerusalem furniture on my right, a Santander bank. Funny story about that Santander bank is that one day I went to deposit some money for a bill and the machine ate my card. And I wasn't able to make the deposit and I wasn't able to pay the bill on time. So what I did was, I didn't have nothing to write with at all inside my vehicle. We're on Castor. We're gonna make a right right here on Castor Avenue. I didn't have nothing to write. I wanted to leave like some type of sign or some type of letter so they know that one of their customers uh, car was stuck inside the machine, right? So I had some prop Halloween blood <laughs> for Halloween. And I literally wrote a, my card is stuck in the Mac machine letter on top of like a USPS envelope in blood. And then I slid it under the Santander bank. Guys, we're on Luzerne and Castor Avenue. 1400 block of East Luzerne, 3900 block of Castor Avenue. Yeah, so I slid that little sign or that little letter under the Santander entrance. Mind you, I think it was like a Saturday evening, so it wasn't gonna open till Monday. I think I came on Monday and I went in first thing in the morning, I waited till they open, I went in and I talked to the teller. And I said, hello, ma'am. Um, I'm coming in to tell you guys that my car got stuck in a machine over the weekend and I left you guys a note. She said, oh, you were the one that left the note. I was wondering, how did you get that note in here? And I'm like, ma'am, you know, I just slid it right under the, the door. There was enough space, there was enough gap. That was prices. Could you imagine opening up the bank and then you see like a bloody, bloody letter talking about that, <laughs> that the car was lost? Priceless. All right, we're on the 4,000 block or 40,000 block of Castor Avenue passing Castor and Lycoming. Castor and Lycoming. We have two story homes on our left with shingles, with siding, with front porches. A lot of the houses in this neighborhood tend to have furnished basements. This restaurant on my right hand side right now is called Pupuseria. Pupuseria, it's a Sabor Latino restaurant number two. So I think they, they focus on seafood if I'm correct. But back in the day when I was a kid, my pop used to take me there. I think it was called Danofas. And I used to be like 13, 12 years old, and my pop used to park up here and we used to eat their, their hot sausages. They used to have Italian sausages with onions, and boy, I used to love them. All right, this is Castor and Huntington Park, or Castor and Hunting Park. We just had a discussion on the Hunting Park narrated hood tour about how Philadelphians tend to call it Huntington Park when it's really Hunting Park. Now, you can go right and still touch base of more Junietta blocks, but we're just gonna focus on the left portion, left half of this hemisphere for now. 
We're on Castor and Bristol. We're gonna make a left. There's a project on my right hand side called the Carl Mackley Apartments, low income housing. We're gonna make a left on the 4200 block of Markland Street. Yeah, they're gonna have to let us go because we have two people double parked here. And as you guys will notice, the architecture, the facade, the layout, just the brickwork and the stylization, it looks a lot different compared to North Philly, to the Badlands and Kensington. It's a lot cleaner, it's a lot quieter. Now I did mention how Hispanics moved to the neighborhood over the last 20 years. And for those of you who don't know, I'm of Latino descent myself. So I don't want anybody to get offended. But when the Spanish people started coming down here, it got a little bit more rowdy. It got a little bit, quote unquote, you can say ghetto. But yeah, once the hood people came down here, Junietta got more hood, if you understand what I'm saying. We got homie working on his car and the right hand side. You gotta get the work done by all means. He was probably changing brakes, a rotor, some shocks or something. It looked like he was working on the suspension. All right, we just passed the 4100 block of Marklin. We're going to cross over Lycoming and Marklin Street. There's no stop signs for them, so we have to ease our way into traffic. Now these neighborhoods, not only do they come with porches, but they also come with back alleys. So technically, we can actually do a lot more exploring if we drove through each of the back alleys, but that would kind of be redundant, be over excessive, like seeing people's alleys. So we're not gonna do the alleys, but you guys can use your imagination. Maybe before the end of this tour, I'll go through one alley so you can have an idea. Some of these uh, houses also have garages. They also have garages, like private garages in the back. But as I was mentioning, we're on Luzerne. This is Luzerne. Marklin and Luzerne. 1400 block of Luzerne. Luzerne Street. Yeah, as I mentioned, some of these basements are furnished and that consists of the garage too. Sometimes people, since they don't utilize their garage, they'll just, you know, turn the garage into a man cave, a kitchen, you know, an extra bedroom. I've seen a couple different setups. We have another dude over here on Maywood Street, Maywood and Luzerne working on his vehicle. He got both of his wheels off. We're gonna make a right on the 4,000 block of Maywood Street. And you see how uniform that neighborhood looks? You don't see a variety of different colorful houses. You don't see two story, three story, three story, two story, two story, one story, two story, three story. You don't see them all mixed up. Look at the streets. You don't really see a lot of trash. Look at the sidewalk. Look at this little teeny dog on my left hand side. You guys see that little teeny weeny dog? Somebody's reversing in front of me, so I'm gonna let them reverse. I don't understand why they're reversing. But there's a little teeny dog. So meanwhile, let's watch this little dog spray his territory. Yo, the dog is shivering. It's a boy dog. It's shivering beyond belief. It looks like a little gremlin, like a little tiny gremlin dog. So that's something else I could let you guys know about. And Philly, look, I think she came out to check for her dog. Yeah, you see that girl that just came out on the left-hand side? She's on the porch. Oh, the dog's taking a poop right there in the middle of the floor. Oh, she's struggling too. So that's another thing. People in Philly, depending on what part of Philly you're in, if you have a small dog, it happens a lot. They, they don't even walk their dogs. They'll go open up the front door, let their dog go outside, smell around, poop pee. And then, yeah, the vehicle behind us was reversed. I was just looking. I wonder if they were gonna try to take the little dog. They probably think that that dog's out there by itself, not knowing that the female's on the porch. But yeah, people will let their dogs go outside and go poop. We're on like homing. So let's cross over. Gotta be really cautious here so we don't get hit on the front end. Yeah, they'll let their dogs go out, go poop and go pee, and then expect them to come back in. Sometimes the dogs end up missing. Sometimes the dogs get hit by a car. Most of the time the dogs make it home safe because that's you know the normal daily habit, but you guys get what I mean. Now on the right, 
the porches are different than the ones on the left. The ones on the left are raised. The ones on the right were more on the lower level. So I wonder what's the story behind that. Okay, we're on Hunting Park. Maywood and Hunting Park. We're gonna cross over Hunting Park. Hunting Park is, you could consider it like a main street. You can get to the east side of the city. You can get to the west side of the city via Hunting Park. But as you can see, you won't see many, you know, young people hanging out. Maybe in the summer, you have occasional block party. You have the older uh, females and males sitting on the steps, maybe smoking a cigarette, maybe chatting, talking. Occasionally, you'll see some kids running around, you know, because the new residents do bring families with them as kids. Right here on this left-hand side, this is the hoagie spot. If, if you're ever in this neighborhood, when I was a kid, they used to sell dollar hoagies here. I no longer eat animal products, for those of you who don't know, but when I did eat animal products, this was the spot. I would get my little turkey hoagies. I would get my, my, my salami hoagies. I would get it all from right here. Now, you could get everything, the works, everything. Onions, hot peppers, pickles, lettuce, tomatoes, all for only $1. As the economy went up, they boosted them up to $125. Then, a couple years later, they boosted them up to $150. Now, in 2020, is 175 for a hoagie. So if you guys are ever in the neighborhood, check out Linda's Deli on 1412 Bristol Street in Philadelphia, PA, the Junietta section. Really cheap hoagies and they're pretty good. All right, we're on M and Bristol Street. M and Bristol, I just made a left. I could have made a right. Probably should have made a right, but maybe on the next block, we'll we'll take it to the, to the top end. It was only one more block and then I would have had to make a left anyway. It, it was gonna cut off. Now check out these houses. You don't see the porches. You don't see the raised basements, but you see a little lawn. The homes were pushed back probably 20 feet from the curb. We're passing M Street, M and Hunting Park. We have a convenience store on the right. And you guys can take a look at the porches on my left, they're sealed. The porches on my right have a raised basement and also have like an open front lawn that's made out of cement versus grass. So every other block, as you can see, they're uniform, but they did kind of change the, the zoning up from block to block. They didn't follow a whole uniform pattern throughout this whole little junior, junior area. All right, we are currently crossing Luzerne. Actually, we're not on Luzerne, I apologize. That was like homing. We're coming up to Luzerne. We're on the 4,000 block of M Street or the 40,000, depends how you say it. I prefer to say 4,000 block of M Street. So now we're on M and Luzerne. 1,400 block of Luzerne, 3,900 block of M Street. Now, in this neighborhood, you won't see a lot of what they call grocery stores or corner stores. A lot of times you'll see like delis, mini markets or convenience stores. I guess they changed the name up, you know, since the demographics of the neighborhood changed a little bit. So they're not just going to call them like a bodega or just a corner store. You don't normally see them named after the owners. Like if you go to the hood and you go to North Philly, you go to West Philly or South Philly, you'll like see the store named after like the owner, like like Juan's Grocery Store or Julito's Cheesesteak Spot or whatever. Over here, it's like, you know, convenience store, grocery store, <laughs> it's just a general name. On my left-hand side, we have a plaza with Save-A-Lot, Rite Aid and all that. You can go food shopping. On my right-hand side, we got more residential homes. I believe I have a family member that lives on the right-hand side. In front of us, we got Bachman or Bachman Trains. I have no idea what they manufacture there. Bachman Inc. I don't know if they make like train parts for an actual locomotive trains. Do they make train horns? Do they make like Christmas tree train sets? What exactly do they work on for trains? I will never know unless you Google it. But Bachman's Trains is on my left hand side. That's that little building right there. Let's make a right right here. We're on M and Erie. 
see Erie Bowling Lanes on my left used to be popping back in the day. Erie Bowling Lanes, they used to have like lockdowns where you can go play bowling all night and they'll lock the building until the sun comes up. It was called the lockdown. All right, so I had a friend that lived on this block, so I used to sleep over this block and all that. This house on my left-hand side, uh, the first one, not the this one right here. Let me see if I can just reverse a little bit because there's one that's that's the blue. You, you see the one that's blue? Not the one that's blue with the stars sign, but the one on the right of it, that house was crooked. Like you would stand in it and everything in the house was crooked from the steps to the to the to the to the floors to the kitchen to if you would sit on a sofa everything was crooked i don't know there was something wrong with that foundation but yeah that was my buddy's cousin's house my buddy lived on the right hand side shout out to hugo um i used to run the, this neighborhood with him run around and all that and politic we used to hang on this block a crazy story about my past i'm not proud of it one time i'm definitely not proud of it i do not steal bikes but I think I was like 15, 16. It was a pouring, pouring rainy day. And there was this bike on my right hand side, right here, like a, like a hoagie. And when I say hoagie, I mean a beat up hoopty bike. It looked like it was already stolen. It had spray paint and everything on it. Well, anyway, I took the bike. Hold on, before we get back to the bike, this alley right here holds significant value. And so does this Sam's Deli at the corner. I used to hang out here with my homie Hugo and like, you know, seven other young dudes. It's on the 4,000 block of Glendale uh, Street, Glendale Street in Luzerne. And man, do I got memories on this corner, like the most bizarre, I, surreal things that happen here in the corner. But before we get into those things, let's see if I don't lose my train of thought. Okay, we are traveling up. I didn't even pay attention. We're still in Glendale, right? This is Glendale. This is the 40,000 block of Glendale. So I jumped on that bike. Long story short, it was pouring rain in that day. I don't know what, what I was thinking. It looked like a hoopty. I needed a quick, you know, ride to the spot. So I jumped on the bike. It was just thrown on the side and I rode it towards where that bowling alley down Glendale, the street we're coming up. I rode it down and I was out. And when I went straight to Erie, I didn't have brakes and there was a Mack truck coming flying and it was raining and it was real slippery. I almost like literally killed myself for being stupid and taking a bike. Yeah, but that's the true story, and you know, I don't, I don't steal, and you know, that's that's not my my twist or my cup of tea. But I don't know, maybe a voice in my head said, "Hey, dude, that's your ride home." But like I said, it wasn't a brand new bike. It's not like it was like a high end bike. If it was a high end bike, I would have never jumped on it. But it was there for the taking, so I took it. That's not good, guys. Moral of the story is don't take stuff because karma comes back, and karma almost caught me tenfold right at the corner. All right, guys, we're on the 4100 block of Glendale, Glendale Street. You see, the ones on the right have indoor porches. The ones on the left don't have porches. Now, the significance of this neighborhood, when I was talking about some crazy things used to happen here. I'm just going to name one of those crazy things. I'm not going to go through a list of crazy things that used to happen in this neighborhood. But let's cross over Glendale, the 4200 block of Glendale and Hunting Park. This is kind of an adult story. So if you have some kids in the room, you know, tell them to cover their ears and tell them to go, you know, get a bowl of cereal. Just, you know, tell them to get out the room real quick so I can tell you guys this story. So on my left hand side, we have Holy Innocence Parish Hall, which is pretty much like, I guess, a Catholic church. It takes the whole square block. And they have directories. They have all the little side buildings and I don't know, side schools. Yeah, It's called a re Area Catholic Elementary School, Holy Innocence. This is Bristol, Bristol and Glendale. So when I was a youngster and I first started coming to this neighborhood, hanging with Hugo, Hugo told me something. He told me something intriguing. He said, dude, we got girls in this neighborhood that do whatever. And I ain't believe him. I'm like, no way, Jose, like stop lying to me, right? <laughs> We're on the 4300 block of Glendale Street. So I'm like, Hugo, no way, you like you lying, bro. And they, all the homies was like, right. And they was like, no, 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 watch this, watch this. At 7 p.m. tonight, we're gonna have several girls turn that corner and be down for whatever. And little did I know, 6.55, you know, was coming on the clock. And I was hanging out there on that corner of that grocery store. And let's make a left right here. Give me one second, we have traffic. I definitely don't wanna get clipped. Let me focus on turning. All right. Okay, what's this, Cayuga Street? I believe this is Cayuga. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is Cayuga. Yeah, this is Cayuga. Uh, we're on Dungan and Cayuga. So he was telling me 
that the girls can do, you know, that they're down to do whatever, and I ain't better leave them. So the clock struck 6.55, and then it started getting close to 6.57, and like 6.58, 6.59, several girls turned the corner. Young girls our age, they were our age. We, we were 16, 15, 16, they were 15, 16, they were teenagers, we were teenagers, and they turned the corner, and yo, they were up for literally whatever. The homies had an abandoned car parked like in the alley. Remember them back alleys I was talking about? And there was like a girl for everyone. And these girls were up for whatever. And uh, this is a crazy story that probably you don't even know. Um, there was one for me. There was one for me. Like pretty much she was down for whatever. But it kind of upset my stomach. It kind of turned my gut. Because I didn't, even though, you know, in your imagination, it's intriguing to, like, you know, be able to talk to a female that easily at the snap of a finger. I kind of got turned off. So everybody was ready to, like, you know, do some type of activity with, you know, their, their female friend. And I was, like, I was, like, turned off. And I was, like, nah. I told the chick. I was, like, nah, nah. And I, like, was, like, uh, and, and <laughs> I didn't do nothing. But I do remember my homies going to the car, you know spending some time coming out minutes later and it was a ritual thing guys like i went over there on several occasions to hang out on the block and we would meet at different locations i was never the type that threw myself out at females and like i said it, it i wasn't really turned on by what they call in 2020 thoughts i don't know you know what i mean it's, it sounds weird like dude but your guy ellen hunting park there's a wells fargo on my right it just ain't sit well with me but you know maybe in my 20s if they would have hit me in my 20s i would have probably looked at the situation differently <laughs> like if there was in their 20s i was in my 20s and the same thing happened you know because i guess your mindset changes over the years but i was 15 16 and right here at this store at, at, at this store at this school on the left hand side and in, in the schoolyard it was another day that we met up and my homies was pretty much getting all access we're on ellen like homing yep the girls would turn all, turn the, the corner and it was like clockwork. They would come and they would hang out and, you know, they were down. I mean, I remember I was talking to the chick. The chick probably thought that I was crazy. She probably thought that I was like like the, like the corniest one because she probably wasn't the only one, you know, doing anything. But, hey, if you want to do something, you better talk to one of the other homies. You know what I mean? But that was probably, now that I look at it as an adult, that was probably the wisest thing because, you know, I you don't never know what you could have called or like. You know what scenario could have blew up or blew out of proportion from that but that's based on a true story and whoever else lived in this neighborhood from 2002 2003 2004 2005 2006 if you were a young homie or a young individual or a young brother then you knew what i was talking about you know exactly what i'm talking about right now that's just a faint memory in my past i don't think about it daily but this is about documenting the city in its rawest essence and that's something that actually happened in this area that i can recall and i can co-sign on it's it's true you know my homie never lied to me i don't know if those girls were promiscuous or if they were experimenting or curious or whatever the case may be but yeah all right guys so i could have made it right there what i'm going to do for you guys is i'm going to make a right here i'm going to make a right on erie on the left hand side we got fine fair supermarket fine wine and good spirits american cable K and Erie. We're gonna make a right on K Street. We had Community uh, Academy on my left hand side when we just turned. Community Academy was a K through 12th grade high school. And that was one of the only high schools that I know of in the city that made not only all their students wear uniforms like skirts, those bowling shoes, and like, you know, top coats and all of that. But let's make a right here on Pike Street in the 1200 block of K and Pike. But they also made them wear lady i'm trying to make a right and she's trying to make a u-turn right in front of me they also had to wear clear book bags so there was no privacy when you would take your items to school like your book bag had to be completely clear it didn't matter if it was red blue pink yellow they sold special clear book bags 
where you weren't allowed to bring like illegal items into the building or if you had anything like cell phones or anything like that, they would be able to see it and take it or confiscate it or whatever. So I remember sometimes in the winter, if you would drive by this neighborhood and see all the kids with their uniforms and their clear book bags, their book bags would be foggy and have condensation because the bags were plastic and clear. Strange, right? Hey, car enthusiasts, we got a Toyota Punto Ocho on my right, a Toyota Corolla. We all know Toyota Corollas is the best. Go ahead, sir. He has a bag of Clementines. Looks like he just went shopping from Rite Aid and he has a scrap truck. Looks like his pickup truck is used for scrapping to make some extra money. You gotta get money however you can. Check out this porch right here. They use like some type of cobblestone. I don't know what you would call that type of material, but they changed the design up a little bit. Okay, we are on Luzerne. We're on Luzerne. Let me cross over. Wow, this red accord is flying. Yeah, in Philly, I don't know if this applies with every urban city. Everyone is in a rush to get to the next stop sign. Everyone is in a rush to get to the next stop light. I don't understand that. I feel as though if you're in a rush, you got to plan accordingly and leave on time. If you're on time, you're late. If you're early, you're on time. So you better set that alarm clock 15 minutes early so you can compensate for not having to, to, to be late and driving fast and rushing everybody else all around you. Okay, we're on the 4,000 block of Howland Street. Now, we can keep on going forward. I think I'm gonna have to just to show you guys. Let me see, no, we were just on L. But we got Claridge right here, so I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go through another block once more. We just went through L, but we're gonna go the opposite way because right in front of us, it was blocked off as you can see. So if I do wanna show you guys more of the opposite end, I would have to go through this block. But you guys gonna check out, we're on Ellen Lycoming. And you can see the houses on my left. You can see the design and you can see the houses on my right. See how they're uniform on my left and they're uniform on my, on my right, but they're not the same as left and right. I don't know if that makes any sense. Instead of making both sides the same exact house, one side has one style, the other side has the other style. So I wonder if there was a price difference back in the day based on that, you know what I mean? All right, we're on Ellen Huntington Park, or Hunting Park. Come on, my friend, you can go, it's green light. I guess he felt rushed, flagged his hand. 4200 block. We have the continuation of that church on my right-hand side. A learning Academy, Lucy Day School for Children with Visual Impairments. Holy smokes, I never knew that. And for those of you who don't know, I was blind in both of my eyes at cataracts. I think I just spoke to you guys about that briefly. But yeah, I got two implants in my eyes. So to find out that that building on my right hand side was a school for people with visual impairments. Wow, I wonder if it was just like a bunch of blind kids. That's crazy, right? On my left hand side, you see a different facade of house. You see it? They got now a little driveway with a little parking area. Then they have a little garage and it's two story. And on the right, they got lawns. So yeah, everything's like berserk. We're on Ellen Cayuga, 1200 block of Cayuga, East Cayuga, 4300 block of L Street. On my right hand side, you'll see Junior the Golf Club. If you're into golfing, this accord almost hit me on my left hand side, flying. Just ate the stop sign, completely blew it. We have Junietta uh, Park for Boys and Girls Club on my right. It's like a little baseball field. It's the park that goes to the Taconi Creek. I'm gonna make a left down Howland. 4300 block of Howland Street. On my left, you see one story houses now. One story, but kind of with like a raised basement. And on my right, you see two story. You see how the ones on the left got a garage? So I guess that could be like a two story, like a story and a half. And then the ones on the right, they're actually about the same now that I think about it. And I look at them, they're almost about the same stylization. Yeah, but that golf club is located right here in Junietta. So if you're into golfing, there's a whole like golfing field, golf course that you can go to. 
Behind the golf course was a area that we used to ride dirt bikes at because we didn't have a spot in the city designated for us to ride dirt bikes. So let's make a left on 4200 block of Claridge Street. We're gonna go down Claridge Street. This is Claridge right here. And you see how they got the really long lawns? Sounds like a tongue twister, right? The really long lawns. Literally have like 20 foot lawns that, that recess out into the street. And you see people have like, you know, chairs, beach chairs, children's toys have decorations. These people have candy canes. They put like the, the solar lights. One person has a canopy, plenty of awnings, things of that nature. We're on Claridge and Hunting Park. In front of us is Batuli's Pizza on my left-hand side. You guys can't really see it. When I was a kid, my pop took me there. And for the very first time in my life, I tried Maracati. Maracati is an Italian pasta shell that has like ground beef. Um, I believe it has like some type of cheese in it, tomato sauce, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it was banging. We got this Porsche going by us right here on my left hand side. I remember back in the day to have a Porsche was cool. Now it's like for me, it's like pretty basic. All right, these are one-story houses on my left, but guess what? There's traffic and somebody is unloading. So this New Jersey car is trying to reverse because I'm assuming they don't want to be here forever. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through this alley. We're going to take advantage and go through the alley since it's the perfect time to do so. I know I wanted to show you all the alleys, but I didn't want to have no reason to do it. Now we got a reason. <laughs> going that way. Can we go right? Can we go that way? Do you mind? Thank you very much. She's probably upset. She's like, hey, hey you, why, why don't you let me be? <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. My apologies. Wow, they completely closed off this alley. I wonder how this dude right here in this corner house got a chance to do that. That has to be against like some, some type of zoning here. Because he closed this alley by just building a little gated pathway. Y'all ain't ever noticed. How he got a chance to do that? Nobody in the neighborhood complained that now they can no longer access their alley like they normally could. Well, y'all seen the alleys in, in the back. These alleys are known to have some of the worst streets in Philadelphia. If you think the streets of Philadelphia are freaking horrible, some of these alleys are like war zones. You don't want to drive through here with a lower car. You'll rip off your catalytic converter. You'll dent your headers. You'll scrape your whole undercarriage. Horrible. You hear how my suspension like is taking an abuse? Ouch. This is a perfect time to have stock wheels and not aftermarket rims. Wow, they closed off the one in the front too. So are we stuck back here? We're gonna have to do a reverse move, like reverses from Uno. You see the garages? I don't know how many people utilize those garages to store their cars. I think nowadays they just like use them for like extra space, like living quarters. Yeah, we have another exit right here. So we, we lucked out. But look at this little setup on my right. You guys see the setup on my right? You see how it's like a two-story porch or it's like a two-story, it's a second story, something up there that where I guess people who own this house, I guess they hang up there. Look at 4,100 block of Claridge. You have one-story homes in front of us. You see those? Those are our one-story homes. Junietta tends to have, I think like two or three blocks with one-story homes. I think there's like two or three blocks right next to Pet Boys. There's also one-story homes. I don't know how much those homes cost. I don't know what they look like on the inside. I can only imagine that they're probably for like single people, maybe seniors, people who don't have kids. Because if you have kids, wow, this accord is flying. And if you stick out your nose and they're looking down, texting, you're gonna take the hit. You're gonna take the hit. If you have no type of witness or proof to say that it was their fault, good luck in court. We're on the 4,000 or 40,000 block of Claridge Street. My cousin Ainge Chavo, who's a YouTuber, used to live on this block back in the day with one of our uncles. I also used to do a lot of recycling in this neighborhood. So when I say recycling, I mean scrapping. Yeah, when I had a pickup truck back in my heyday in um, college, when I was going to college, I was working a nine to five. I was doing all my little side grinds. And I also had a pickup truck where I was recycling metal, picking up refrigerators, washers, stoves, anything to make a dollar. I was chasing a dollar heavy. 
All right, again, I'm blinded on my left hand side because there's like a freaking vehicle covering the corner. So you have to like slowly, slowly wean yourself in. Because if not, then you already know the deal. <laughs> you don't get hit. I keep saying it on every corner. I got to wean myself in, but I got to remind myself while I'm talking to you guys not to get too involved or engaged in talking and just not pay attention to traffic and boom, get into an accident on camera. That'd be horrible. So. Yeah, check out this block. We just passed a three-story house. It looked like they added a whole third story on it. So we're still on Claridge, right? The 3900 block of Claridge Street. Now, I guess an interesting fact for all the, look, we got these older people just hanging out front of their house, sitting out front, enjoying the, the mild air today. It's a 60 degree day here in Philadelphia, PA, making a right on Claridge make this right give me one second guys and then i'll tell you another uh entertainer slash famous person that was raised in this neighborhood give me one second we're gonna make a right we're gonna make a right right here on k and pike so for those of you who are boxing enthusiasts and like boxing danny garcia used to be from this neighborhood so if you like danny garcia this is also a neighborhood that he traveled all through when he was a youngster. He only stood like three, four blocks behind me. So behind me, there's a, there's a little park, a little cul-de-sac cul type of park area where he grew up at, him and his siblings. Um, I mean, they was in another spot before that spot, but most recently, like when he, um, around the time when he used to rap, I don't, I, I don't know if many of y'all know that the, that the boxer, Danny Garcia, tried rapping on it a little bit. I don't know if his career worked out. I guess it didn't. Um, shortly after him being in this neighborhood was when he started, I guess, doing the boxing, taking it serious, and he blew up. Now he is a professional fighter. So yeah, this neighborhood raised Danny Garcia. All right, so now we are crossing Luzerne. Take a look at these houses. I don't know if you notice. You see a pattern in this neighborhood. You see porches, you see lawns, you see garages, you see cobblestone fronts, you see brick pointed fronts, you see shingle fronts, you see aluminum siding fronts. But pretty much when you do see something, you see a theme straight across the board. You know, you see them mixing and matching. Like when you go to North Philly, it's all mixed up. Colombia to Esta Vida on my right hand side estilo de vida you could tell that's all my spanish people because they painted it rainbow colors <laughs> on my left hand side we got more one-story homes with little lawns and awnings and on my right side we got the two stories we got a tns express market again remember that thing i was telling you earlier they're not like corner stores and all of that and they tend to be, a, I wouldn't say more high class over here, because that's probably like a bad term to use, but a little bit more uppity or like they have like a different layout versus the hood stores. The hood stores are more ghetto compared to these. We're on K and Hunting Park. K and Hunting Park. The streets are really nice. Look how beautiful these streets are beautiful streets these people are blessed with magnificent roads minus their alleys but their roads compensate for having crappy alleys now go to north philly or go to west philly or or, or, or sometimes go to a spot in center city and watch how many potholes you run into northeast always been a little cleaner this ain't even real northeast this ain't deep northeast i'm surprised juniet is class class classified or categorized i was going to say classified and categorized in one word classicalized <laughs> that's how my brain thinks um we're on k and cayuga 4300 block of k street 1100 block of cayuga with junietta park in front of us home of the junietta bears the little league baseball team and i believe they have a police academy um baseball team out here too this is a good spot where i used to come with my dogs and like walk my dogs on the left hand side we got bennington we actually can't come up bennington because it's a one-way you see the playground on my right there's like water sprinklers where if you come in the summer 
You could bring your kids. There's a beautiful playground there. In the summer, it's usually filled with a lot of Spanish people and maybe some African Americans and, a, and an occasional Caucasian person or two. But it's a nice environment. Like nobody's hostile. You know, they're usually playing a little bit of music, cooking out. It's a nice place to go and take your kids at. Check out this block. They have their own driveways. They have their own little garages. Beautiful brick pointing. That gentleman right there looks like he's of Caucasian descent. Then again, he could be a Spaniard because, you know, people from Spain look like they could be Caucasian. Then again, people from Puerto Rico look like they could be Caucasian because if you guys ever watch those Puerto Rican or uh, Puerto Rico, what they call novelas, but novela is a Spanish word for soap opera, a soap opera. A lot of those Spanish actresses and actors, they look Caucasian. And if they didn't speak and you didn't hear the accent, you would think that it was like a Brad Pitt lookalike. You know what I mean? All right, so we are on the 4200 block. Check it out. You also see, not for nothing, but you see a lot more um, modern cars. Not the most modern, not the most high end, but you do see a lot better cars in Junieta, depending on what block you go to. Must mean like it's a working class community. It's on Lonsdale, 4200 block of Lonsdale. We're gonna cross over Lonsdale and Hunting Park. Lonsdale and Hunting Park. Now this block has one story homes on my left, one story homes on my right. This reminds me of like a suburban community. Like if it wasn't for the city being in the backdrop, you know, squint your eyes, turn your head sideways, like I always say, and boom, like you're in the suburbs. But yeah, look at the neighborhood one story we had some new york tags on my right got that jaguar that that 90s jaguar on my right motorcycle yeah it sounds like the suspension is starting to take a beating from going through some of these neighborhoods starting to hear like a little creek normally i didn't have no creeks that's the tough part about creating this content that's why it would be really helpful if you guys could give me a thumbs up and comment below right after the video don't comment during the live stream but comment after the video so the so the comment can stay there and what that will do is that will help this video receive more exposure it'll tell the algorithm that people enjoy this video then they'll recommend it to someone else and the more people that see the video the more pennies i'll be able to generate for doing this service and those pennies will accumulate every month where I can address suspension issues, address gasoline, address, you know, little things, wear and tear from doing these tours, if that makes any sense. So I don't ask for cash donations, but you could always donate a thumbs up. And even better, if you wanna go the long way and be generous, share the video. That'll do tremendous help. Whether you sh click the share link, copy and paste it, and send it to somebody via text. If you're on your phone, all you have to do, we're on, Lonsdale, 4,000 block of Lonsdale and Luzerne, 1100 of East Luzerne. All you have to do is click share and it allows you to copy and paste the link and then you can text it to a friend, text it to a cousin, text it to a family member that's not in the state. Share it on a Facebook page, share it on a Twitter, share it on a Instagram, share it on something. It'll do tremendous help, it'll, it'll, it'll really help me, man. Right now I need all the help that I can get and I can't do it without you guys. That's the harsh reality of it. Check out the canopy on my left. Look, look at the gate that they did on my left and they like covered it. Oh, look at the squirrel. Yo, we slowed down just in time for the little squirrel dude. What's up, squirrel dude? Say what's up to your fans from the World Wide Web. Yo, he, he did a nut in his mouth. That's so cliche. You would never actually think you'd see a squirrel running around with a nut, but that dude had a nut. All right, this is a back corner. I say it's back corner because there's a giant van on my left blocking like my view and they don't have a stop sign oh there's a cat in the middle in front of us too look at uh you see the cat it has a collar so here's an interesting fact for people who are not of spanish descent if you go to puerto rico and when you go to puerto rico you look at the neighborhoods you see how there's cats around here running stray like in america i don't know i can't speak for other states of america but in america there's cats running everywhere right you very rarely see a dog maybe you know there'll be an escape dog or two but you don't see dogs often right in puerto rico it's the opposite i'm not a lifelong resident of puerto rico I only visited but you know two two times in my lifetime i shot a music video i got flown out to pr i shot a music video there and then 
I also visited for like a month and a half when I was like 11 or 10. So, but from my experience and from, from what I heard from other people who are residents of Puerto Rico, dogs over there is so common to find on the street. All right, on my right hand side, we're passing Rodriguez Funeral Home. I had family on top of family on top of family and friends viewed at this funeral home. Yep, as well as many people in the city. That's a popular funeral home, sad to say. William J. Dennis, MD Pediatrics was on my right. One of these homes was a private pediatrics office. Rest in peace to my uncle Eddie. He used to live on my right hand side on the 3800 block. He used to live on my right hand side, 3800 J Street. We're on J and Pike. On my left hand side, that mini market came in clutch one day. My car, Ugly Betty, I went to go and apply for a firearm license and when I had a walk, well, anyway, so I went, I went inside, I did all the paperwork, everything. When I came out, we're on the 3900 block of J Street. And when I came out, my alarm clicker wasn't working. The battery died. So I have a kill switch and alarm and all that. So I couldn't literally leave in my car unless I bought a new battery. So the closest store was that mini marker. So I had to walk like four or five, maybe six huge blocks to go in there. They really looked out on the cookout. They had batteries for a dollar each. I bought the battery that I needed. I was able to fix my alarm clicker and I was able to leave. So yeah, crazy, right? All right, we're on J and Luzerne, J and Luzerne Street. Another person working on their vehicle on my right hand side. We missed them. The vehicle was up in the air. We have a beer distributor on my left hand side on Jay and Lycoming. A beer distributor. Then we have another block of single story home developments. We could have went left and saw more of the neighborhood, but we're gonna keep going straight for the purpose of this tour. See the one story homes? We got more people working on the left hand side. So we already saw like four or five people working on their vehicles in Junietta. But it's the middle of the day. The sun's about to go down soon. I don't even know what time it is. It's probably like three o'clock in the afternoon, maybe four. Anyway, I know within an hour, hour and a half, the sun's gonna go down. And you can see it's a 60 degree day. And you know, it's, it's pretty calm. It's, you know, the, the, the ambience is real nice and, and tranquil. And if you go to the hood, if we go down to North Philly, I could have showed you some of the you know, same hoods I showed you before, but there's gonna be a lot of activity because there's money to be made and there's people out there willing to risk it all to make it. All right, we are on J and Bristol Street, 1000 block of Bristol, 4300 block of J Street. You see how the homes are connected, every other couple homes and then they got an apex. They have like a A triangle top. You see like on my right hand side, you see it? We don't have that on the north side. We don't even use shingles on the north side. They had a dirt bike in front of me. Another dirt bike, one, one hand willy. They didn't stop though, I had to stop like, like I'm all for dirt bike riding. That's the park I was talking about. This is Junietta Park on my right hand side. It's a nice park to visit. And there's a super long trail there. So if you're into walking or hiking, take a walk through that trail. Yeah, we're on Elsnor Street. This is El Elisnor or Elsnor? Let me reread the sign when we get to the corner. But what I was gonna say about the dirt bikes is I'm all up for riding dirt bikes. I love dirt bikes. I'm never gonna turn my back on dirt bikes. I just think you have to be wise when riding a dirt bike. You have to understand that it's an off-road vehicle. It doesn't have tax, doesn't have insurance, doesn't have registration, doesn't have a seatbelt, doesn't have flash, it doesn't have nothing. And it, you know, not only, wow, beautiful classic car on my left to all the car enthusiasts. Yeah, it's a Ford, an old school Ford, but they tend to just run stop signs, run lights, weave around cars, hit cars and keep going. And yeah, that's, you know, that's not something that I'm proud of because it's young brothers that look just like me. I call them young brothers because I'm young myself. If you look at me, you guys wouldn't believe if I just, if I showed you a picture of me, if someone showed you a picture of me and they would tell you that this individual has some type of knowledge, some light bulb in him lit in, like, you know what I mean? 
you guys wouldn't believe it. You would go, no, he's 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 just a hoodlum. He's I mean, I can turn the hoodlum off. I can turn the hoodlum on. And right now, I understand that I have to target my audience and. Not all of my audience is from the hood. You know, I got people watching from the Netherlands. I got people watching from the United Kingdom. I got people watching from Poland. I got people watching from Italy. I got people watching from from Kenya, from Ugarai. I got people watching from Lithuania. I got people watching from all over the world. So with that being said, I got to differentiate and separate, you know, the business mind from the street mind. So it's always good. You know, I figure it's good for you guys. Check out that pet boys right in front of us. Cuts off the street. Uh, Palmetto. Let's go up Palmetto and just come back around because it's a dead end again on my left. Yeah, I figured it's good for you guys to actually travel the city with, you know, a lifelong resident. Somebody who feels comfortable driving. I mean, sometimes I think I have an interesting sense of humor. Other, other times I'm probably only cracking myself up and cracking no one else up, but <laughs> it's cool. Uh, the Aponte on my left hand side, that was the only people who messed up the front of their house with a bunch of weird looking bricks. And again, listen to the last name, Aponte. The Spanish people, leave it up to the Spanish people to do some customized stuff. <laughs> it's a bad joke. Hey, guys, don't be busting on Spanish people now. Say <laughs> no. But, um, yeah, guys, I just want to show you, you know, don't judge the book by the cover. Not only don't judge the book by the cover, but don't judge the neighborhood by the cover. Don't believe everything you hear. Don't believe everything you see. Sometimes you just got to be out there and experience it yourself to actually know the truth. And I'm willing to go out here and show you guys the truth, you know? I mean... I'm not going to say Philly's perfect. I'm not going to say Philly is angelic, scot-free of crime. But it's more or less like placing yourself at the right spot, right time, wrong spot, wrong time type of deal. And it's the energy you put out, you know, it's the energy that you receive. So, you know, just mind your business, live life, go to work, go to school, do whatever you have to do, make a living. What is he doing? Picking up food? Was this Uber Eats or something? No, it's probably like a family member. She was probably dropping off some food. He's pushing the car. I guess that was his car. His car got mangled. He's pressing it. See how he pressed it? Look at this little asadero lo, los, los tios? What is it? Something. Oh, pure taco. It's a taco truck on my right-hand side. Saw that? On Palmetto Street. All right, so we got Junietta Park again in our front. Now, female was just killed here, unfortunately, less than probably less than a month ago. She was killed right here on this corner. I think she was walking her dog like, I don't know. Yeah, right there on my left-hand side, there's a memorial for her at that pole. She was walking her dog and somebody hit her in a pickup truck and left. Let's make it right here so that you guys can see the memorial. And then we're going to come down I Street. This is how you would enter Taconi. Uh, creek pathway if you want to go and you can also hit the little dirt bike spot I was talking about that we used to ride back here and you can also hit the golf course back here we're on Malta Street Malta this is Taconi Creek Park right in front of us you can follow it with a bicycle you can go jogging down there you can go walking down there there's a little little river stream if you go down here occasionally you'll see like ducks you may see deers um, yeah, you might see just some wild animals, you know, running around. Somebody did a lot of illegal dumping. You see this illegal dumping right here? That's a shame. How do you do that? Anyway, if you go in there, oh, I want to go this way because I want to see this Waggle Van Civic right here for all my car enthusiasts. This is a very rare vehicle right here. And is it a four-wheel drive? Holy smokes, that's a four-wheel drive. Oh, man, it's in such poor shape, but I could bring that back to life. Guys, I need a garage. You guys got to help me get a garage. Seriously. <laughs> help me get a garage so that so I could collect those cars and I can build them and show you guys how I build them and do cool stuff on the channel. Man, because I would really love to have that Waggle Van Civic, that red one. I'm, I'm bust a U-turn just so we can see it twice and then so we can see that memorial. But I would love to have a Waggle Van Civic. If you don't know, I love the EF base um, baseline of Honda. It's the 1988 through 1991 Civic body. That's the body I grew up on. That's what Ugly Betty is. And this red one on my left hand side is a very rare sought after EF Honda Civic wagon. Four wheel drive. And if it's stick shift, it still sells for a great money. Sticker Auto sells good money. And right now, those drivetrains are being chopped up and sold and broken up all across America, making them even more rarer and more harder and sought after to find, man. I want one. I really want one. 
We used to have one back in the day. My pop had one. It was a four wheel drive. So he had like several cars parked on the block. But then he sold it to a family member for like on the lookout price for like 450 bucks. Tell me about it. Anybody who who knows what that's worth right now is probably like turning in their seat. I know, same thing I said. I really love the Waggle Van Civic. It's the year I was born, 1988. You know, and that's that generation, the 88 through 91 model. So I really like it. On my right hand side, Ian Cayuga on that corner next to the pole, that's where she was hit at. And that's her memorial. She was a mother. I believe she was a grandmother. She was a wife. She was a daughter. You know, these, these people, you know, have full lives and they take it away too shortly for, for something dumb. Somebody hit her and never turned themselves in. I don't think they ever caught them. Check out this center island. You guys see the center island on I Street? You see how now it's separated? Now, they, now again, they just changed the whole stylization of the hood. We're on I and Bristol. And now they got this center island with grass and a, and a few trees. You see it? Crazy. I guess if you have a dog, that might be useful so you can walk your dog. You know, you can walk them in the center island. Island Island. I've always felt strange pronouncing island as island, but when you look at the word, it looks like island. The S is silent. There's a lot of strange words like that in English, in the English dictionary, the English vocabulary. We're on I and Hunting Park. I and Hunting Park. 4100 block of I Street. We have Paradise Water Ice on my right hand side, another business. Uh, buddy on the right hand side was buffing his car with a buffer So it's a beautiful day to work on your car guys. I know I should be home working on my vehicle, but <laughs> We're on I and like combing I and like combing Now this streets wider they removed the center island. It's still two lane, but as you can see on the left side It must be the Spanish people started getting real funky with their house designs. <laughs> Again, look at that house on the right, guys. You see how it's a brick pointed house? You see it? And in the front, they did this orange stackle or spackle, or I don't know what that's called. There's a term for it. But they did the front bright orange and they just left the side normal brick. I don't know why, but to each his own. This block right here, I used to have a friend. She used to um, live on this block and she was Fat Joe's niece. Fat Joe was her uncle. So, yeah. I used to be in class with her. We're on Pike. I and Pike Street. PNC Bank on my left hand side. On Erie Avenue. I and Erie Avenue. There's a banshee over there. I see somebody on a banshee on an off-road vehicle. They are whipping it on an ATV. For those of you who don't know what a banshee is, that's an ATV. 350 cc's of pure power. Yo, check out this waggle van on my left-hand side, the baby blue one. You see it? You see it? Right there. Boom, baby blue. Right there. Boom. I love it. It's probably not an all-wheel drive, but I still love it. All this graffiti on my left-hand side. This is an abandoned building. On my left-hand side, it's like a factory. I don't know if they're gonna like bring it back to life or what. On my right hand side, this is Coca-Cola. So if you buy Coca-Cola products from Philadelphia or probably the tri-state area, I don't know how many states this one location serves, but this building on my right hand side stretches for about two extremely large city blocks. This whole entire city block and then the next whole entire city block is where the Coca-Cola factory is located in the Junietta section of Philadelphia. We're on G Street, G and Erie. And as you can see, Coca-Cola's on my right. See the big sign, the big clock spinning on my left. Then we have the Coca-Cola overpass right here in front of us. Then we have the Coca-Cola stamp on my right. Coca-Cola vans on my left, you see it? So this is their property, this is their facility. I remember being in high school when I was a kid that was kind of like a sought after job. When you, when I was like 17, 18, it was said to be like, if you can graduate high school and go work for Coca-Cola, then you're doing pretty good for yourself. Now, I, I don't see that as the case, but yeah, you know, you can do vending there. You can be a truck driver for Coca-Cola. You could probably be in the manufacturing area of the Coca-Cola business, you know what I mean? But that's where it's located. 
We're on Genia Luzerne. On the left-hand side, we have huge electrical conductors. That whole entire block has something to do with the electric company. I'm not sure what it is, but that will conclude today's short tour of Junietta. We did not cover every single block of the Junietta section, but this is just an idea, a tip of the iceberg for those of you who are curious. If you like the video, please hit that thumbs up button. If you like to make a donation of a comment, when the video ends, please click the comment section and share your thoughts. Turn on your notification bell so you can get notified when the next video drops, because if not, you will not be notified. It's very important that you turn on the notification bell. All right, guys, I hope you have a good day. And this is Tune Tuning Out.